Plex Media Player, the next generation of home entertainment software designed specifically to bring you ultimate functionality, compatibility, and usability right to your living room. Almost a year's worth of work dedicated to building it from the ground up. So today, let's take it for a test drive. Now, of course, nothing was truly wrong with Plex Home Theater. It worked as intended, handled just about every major file type out there, and it never really annoyed you with too many bugs. I'm not saying that there weren't any bugs, I'm just saying that they weren't showstoppers. But like all good things, it had to come to an end. Again, not because it was bad, but because the vision of a next generation media player required too many changes to make happen. Sometimes it's better to just start over with what you've learned in the past than to continue on with outdated software. The biggest change is in the media player itself, or basically the foundation of everything. You see, Plex Home Theater was based off of XBMC's Frodo media player. While Plex did provide you with everything you needed to easily work with your Plex media server, it was the XBMC platform that actually played all of your media. In the new Plex Media Player, however, everything is built using MPV as a platform that provides compatibility with almost any kind of media file you want to use. MPV is highly developed, well-tuned, and incredibly fast. And to top it all off, Plex actually recruited the top contributor to the open source MPV project to make sure everything went smoothly. With all that in play, Plex focused on the interface for browsing your media. If you've been using the Plex app on something like an Xbox, PlayStation, or a number of other different TV platforms over the past year, then you will instantly recognize the look and feel right at home. Not only will this improve the overall user experience, but it will also make it easier for Plex to push out updates and upgrades to all platforms. And that includes the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Intel HTPCs. Right now, Plex Media Player is available to any Plex Pass members as a preview version, and once that preview period ends, it will be available to everyone. To get it, head on over to Plex.tv and click on Downloads. Then click on the Plex Packs Downloads and look for the new Plex Media Player icon and download button in the bottom right of the page. Now you can pick from Windows, Mac, or Embedded to start your download. After it's finished, you can start the installation as you would with any other software by going through the installation prompts. Now that you're installed, head on over to your start menu and launch the application. And yeah, you might need to authorize this through your firewall. Once inside, it will give you a PIN number to type into the Plex website that logs you into the Plex Media Player and connects you with your Plex Media Server. After that's done, you will be greeted with a brand new shiny Plex interface that will allow you to browse through your media and find that perfect movie to start playing. I guess I could use a little social interaction. Okay, well, let's back up a little bit and take a second to enjoy the new, smooth browsing experience of all your movies. Notice how the scroll speed is just fast enough to get the job done, but not too fast so you don't miss anything. In fact, notice how quick everything is and just works in general. I'm able to switch libraries, start and stop movies and shows quickly. I mean, everything just feels snappy and responsive. You can even check out and configure the settings for the Plex Media Player by going up to the top right of your home screen, hovering over your username and selecting it. After you choose settings from the drop down menu, you will be presented with a number of different options to customize your experience. Now, not everything is rainbow and butterflies just yet. Since this is a brand spanking new preview release, it still lacks some features, like for example, a search feature. Don't worry though, this is high on the priority list, so it should be added soon. You can check out a link in the description to see a bigger list of planned features and known issues. So what do I think about the new Plex Media Player? Well, I have used many different versions of the Plex app on many different platforms, and I can say one thing for sure, Plex has come a long way. The best part for me is the speed. Not only is starting it a lot faster, but shutting it down is almost instant. With Plex Home Theater, my computer could sometimes hang for as long as five seconds after I told it to close. Moving in between libraries has gotten a little faster too, but the biggest improvement with media browsing is the poster art load times. Of course, the speed of the posters loading will be determined by your hardware and network connectivity, but even when I tried Plex Home Theater on the same PC that my server was on, I would still run into poster loading delays. 
One thing I kind of miss, though, is the speed of scrolling through the movies. Even though it's easy to select the first letter of a movie, some people might have a lot of movies that share the same first letter. With Plex Home Theater, the longer you held down the scroll, the faster it would go, you know, within limits, of course. However, with the new Plex player, you're stuck at one set scrolling speed. Not a big deal, but if you have a specific movie in mind and you don't have a search feature, you know it's somewhere in the middle of the A's, then you might be stuck scrolling for a while. But keep in mind that if you're looking for something that's closer to the end of the A's than it is the front, it's better for you to start off with the B's and then scroll back. Call that a pro tip. Next, I kind of sort of miss the clicking noise when I'm scrolling through the menus. Again, it's not an issue, but I still kind of liked having it for some reason. I do like the little triple circle icon thing though that changes your view on the title screen from an extended details to related movies and extras. I really can't wait to get the search option back because, well, I use that a lot, but it is nice to have the option to use a mouse pointer, although I did find that using a keyboard or remote was a lot faster. And of course, it's good to see channels show up from day one, which has sometimes been a missing feature in new Plex apps. Overall, this is a great improvement and it's visually pleasing. I feel right at home being a primary Xbox One user because they share the same interface. The only bad thing is, is that it runs so much faster on my PC than it does my Xbox, now my Xbox feels a little sluggish. Definitely a first world problem though. So what do you think? Impressed? Let me know in the comments. And make sure to report any bugs or errors that you find in the Plex forums. This app is brand new and any help you could provide by informing the developers of bugs that you came across can only help to improve it. Here's a pro tip though. If you want to report an error or in a bug, don't just get online and say, hey, this error popped up. Tell them what you were doing, how to get that error, what happened afterwards. The more details, the better. Just imagine, if you're trying to explain to somebody on how to recreate the error so they could debug that and find a solution, what steps would you take to do it? That's all for today. Like and subscribe below, and thanks for watching.